It's been a while since I did a K2 PDF op video, so what I want to do here is highlight the new Windows GUI in uh, K2 PDF op version 2. I'm going to go get it from Firefox. I've got it set to go to my K2 PDF op page, but you can just put that into Google, and it'll be the first search result. Click on the download, put in the CAPTCHA code, click on the Windows 64-bit version, save that, open my downloads, open the containing folder, copy it, close everything up, and paste. And there it is, and once it's here you can just double click it. Okay, and here's the GUI. There are a couple of uh, small menus at the top. There's the area where you your files for to be converted will show up. There's a place where you can directly edit the K2PDF opt environment variable. There's a, a place where you can type in additional command line options. So I don't cover every command line option in the GUI um, because it would just be too cluttered. So you can type in if there's a command line option that isn't covered and you can find all of them right there in the menu. Um, then you can type that in here. And then right below that is a box that shows the command line conversion of everything that you can select in the GUI. So if I, for example, pick color output, you'll see the dash C show up in that box there. So that you can put that onto the command line to mimic whatever you selected here. A lot of other uh, options, I'll cover some of them in this video including the custom presets uh, and the device selection. I'm going to set my device to a Kindle Paperwhite. If your device is not in this menu, you can just put in the width and height and dots per inch of your screen, device screen right here. And that's really all K2PDF op needs to know about your device. And then the conversion mode and the preview window. And I'll show you how that works. Let's start by converting a simple article and this one is just the article that's uh, featured on the website it's just a two column technical article example and it has scalable text so I can scale it all the way up and it looks smooth and that is selectable text as well and I want to retain those features when I convert it in K2 PDF Opt. So I'll start by dragging it to the file list and I'm going to just preview the first page in the default mode just to show you how that works so here's your preview of the first page I can right click to go to full resolution right click to go back to full screen that's what this button does also or I can do smaller magnification steps with these buttons and at full mag or a larger mag I can use the left button to, to click and drag in the preview window now the preview ha actually has dual functionality. You can preview the output file or you can preview how K2 is, mar is marking up your source by checking this box, generate marked up source, and now go back to the preview. And instead of the output page, you'll get how K2 is marking the source page. See the red boxes here. All right, and the, and the, uh, the blue in this region here indicates K2 is going to wrap this title. Uh, so if you go back to the output preview, you see it does wrap that title. And if when you go to two column mode, now that's going to do a native conversion on two columns. You see now we're lit up on the native PDF output. And this wrapping is going to go away because it will not reflow text in native output mode. So if I now preview Okay, but it will be selectable and scalable, and that's the advantage of native PDF output. Okay, so I've got things set the way I want them, and I'm going to store my presets in a radio button here, just like the radio button in your car. I'll call that two-column paper. Okay, so now if I close K2PDF opt and relaunch it, Okay, it's gone back to all the default settings, but all I have to do is click two-column paper, and now I'm in two-column conversion mode, Kindle Paperwhite. 
and I drop my article in there, and I convert it. Okay, I can open that file, and here it is. And like I said, the text will still be scalable, looks good at all magnifications, and it'll be selectable. So your output file has all the functionality of the input file on your Kindle. Okay, now I want to do an article that is a single column article that I, want, that I want to reflow. So I'm going to remove this file. And this is the article I'm looking at. Uh, and you can see it's just a single column of text. And it's too wide for my Kindle, so I want K2 to reflow that. So I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to set to default mode now. And I'm going to preview the marked up page one. Okay, and you can see wherever there's blue boxes here, that's where K2 is going to reflow the text. But it's not reflowing this region because of this black line. Well, it turns out that I can get rid of vertical lines that, uh, that mess up the reflow on K2 by just checking this box here, Erase Vertical Lines. And I'll re-preview the file, and there we go. We've got reflow text all throughout the document there. So let's fit that. So now let's look at the output by unchecking that. Okay, so here's my output. It looks good. Let's go to the next page. Look at that. Now, if the text is not big enough for you here, you can increase the output DPI. So I'm going to bump that up, re-preview. It's getting bigger. Maybe you want it still bigger. Let's go to 300 DPI. That's pretty nice and big. Now it's getting easy to read. So if that's good for you, reflow text. We store the settings. And one column paper and we can convert that file. And we'll open it. So now you can see the text. Now this text is not scalable all the way up. It is bitmapped, a bitmapped page, but it is selectable. You can't have wrapped or reflowed text be scalable. K2 just won't do that at this point. But it is selectable and searchable, for example, if I look for Gould. So it has the all the benefits that you have in the original file. And you can see it still looks quite good. And it's nice and large, so you can read it on your Kindle. So those are ways that you can use the GUI. There are a lot of other features. Hopefully I'll cover them in some future videos, but I wanted to give you a start on using some of the basic features.